Hello guys, so um, I'm planning to do a recording to show you guys how I uh, did um, something like this in Photoshop, uh, which I use are pretty much just uh, changing different blending mode and applying mask on the image. And then after this, oh, and I'll also talk a little bit about how you can download different like brushes so you can add more textures uh, in your uh, image. Okay, and then the second part of the video, I'll show you how uh, to use in design to place your image in the program and apply text on it. So that will be part two. Okay, so let's get started with part one. Okay, so part one, we start with creating a new file. Go to File, New. Okay, and then I'll uh, make sure you set up the uh, request, uh, require uh, file format that is stated on the syllabus, so that's uh, 11 and a quarter inch uh, in height for 14 and a quarter inch and the resolution should be 200. Uh, the quarter inch are um, the additional bleed that will be um, kind of placed in InDesign and everything will make sense, which I will explain later. So make sure you have the size set up correctly and it should be uh, in portrait, not landscape. Okay, so let's create this new file. Okay, and then um, if you go to Blackboard under Project 2 Demo, uh, I have the exercise file uh, uploaded over here so you can download um, the zip file and have uh, the uh, kind of the example image I use uh, in this example. So let me find my folder. I think I, hopefully I can find it somewhere. Uh, Kind of forgot where I put it. Okay, so let's uh, download this really quickly. Okay, so now it's in my download folder. Okay, so that's all the image I included. So how to import all those image in Photoshop? Uh, the easiest way is just select all the layers and then just drag that uh, in your workspace. And uh, if you drag more than one file, uh, you have to, uh, Photoshop will import them one by one. So after um, you uh, have it in place, you can uh, rotate it, uh, hold, hold shift, or you can even uh, scale it up uh, to make it fit your need. Okay, I'll just make it a little bit bigger and hit return. So on the tr it will confirm that the image uh, is imported and you can see uh, the image will come in one by one so you have to make sure uh, you import them and either click on the check or hit return or enter um, to confirm the placement of your documents. Okay, so it will take a minute. Okay, and okay I'll leave this one like that. This one is just a big texture. Okay, rotate this one. Okay, you can also change the uh, size over here on the top. So I will ch uh, change it to 200. It's a little too big. Oh, maybe 150. Okay, make it a little bit bigger. So it will fit the size of my canvas. Okay, looks good. Okay, and last, this one should be the woman. Okay, make it a little bit larger too. Okay, make sure you don't, uh, make sure you're, when you're uploading, uh, it's not distorting the image. Okay. So when you uh, place a new image uh, into your file, uh, you can see it's a smart object. Smart object means when you see this little icon, it's great that if you uh, kind of modify the size of your file and then you change your mind, you want to go back and make it bigger. Photoshop won't um, kind of lose any of the high quality of the image. So for example, if I create a new layer and I can right click uh, on the layer over here and find retrosize layer. So now you can see the icon is gone. Okay, so now this layer is not a smart object. So when I do free transform, uh, which is shortcut command T, and when I make it smaller, and then I change my mind, you can see because this is no longer a smart object, 
uh, when I resize the scale, the image, you can see the image become much blurrier. Okay, so you show you this one is the smart, uh, this one is the one that I resize. I'll just make it even more extreme. I'll make it like even, even smaller or resize it again. It will also lose more resolution that way. Yeah, I think you can definitely tell the difference right now uh, because uh, I didn't have this layer as a smart object. But in default, you, um, Photoshop will make your layer, when you import it, it will convert it as a smart object. So you don't have to worry that you're losing resolution. But just keep in mind, if you ever need to like uh, edit the actual uh, layer, but it's a smart object, you can see right now I'm using a brush, it won't allow me to do it. But um, if you try to do it, Photoshop will warn you and tell you, okay, I'm going to regicize this uh, smart object. So if you don't want to, you can hit cancel, but if you hit okay, you can see it will automatically retrocite that layer and make it into a regular layer. You can also uh, convert your regular layer, convert to the smart object if you decide, okay, you still need to preserve uh, information when you do the scaling. Okay, so this is a little brief info what's a smart object and what this little, I little icon mean. Okay, if you don't like dragging your image uh, into Photoshop, the same function, you can find it under File and uh, Place Embedded, okay. So instead of dragging it from a folder, you can find it in your folder, actually, and then just um, double click, and then it will embed, embed the file or place the new layer into your same file uh, this way. Okay, so uh, either way, you uh, prefer to do things, uh, but works the same, just a slightly different method. Okay, so um, what my uh, plan uh, for this project here is I want to make this woman uh, show kind of the uh, texture of the watercolor in the back. And then I will have on um, those like paper texture. Um, I'll use those as a additional layer for uh, the background. Okay, so let's do the first part. How to like make uh, the woman to see the layer beneath it. So it's very simple. All you need to do is change the blending mode. So under normal, uh, this is the setup for blending mode. Uh, normal is the default. Okay, you can see when I change different mode, um, it will blend through the background. Okay, so you need to change the, uh, the layer on top. Okay, if you change the layer beneath, it will blend through the layer beneath it, but not the one on top. So you can just um, go through the uh, different list and see which one you like the most. Uh, I think overlay looks pretty cool, so I'll just choose that one. Okay, but uh, there's some issue. For example, uh, I can see uh, the background of that image. Okay, let's change it to normal first. Okay, I don't want to see that square around the woman, so how can we remove that? So it's the same thing that we did before. Uh, we will create a selection and then remove the parts that we don't need. Okay, so uh, let's just use the uh, quick selection tool and select the woman. Okay, it's actually pretty easy how uh, to select. And okay, yeah, that's it. So we just uh, have, now we have the selection. We can click on the add mask. So now we have this mask for the woman. And now we change it to overlay. You can see uh, the woman uh, won't have that kind of big box around her. And the layer, um, texture goes through, uh, looks really good. Okay, so we also want uh, the same uh, kind of mask uh, for the texture too. So one way you can do it is you can just hold Option, hold Option, and then drag, uh, drag the uh, mask that you want to copy and then drop it on the layer beneath. So we just copy a uh, the same mask that we just created earlier. Make sure you're not dragging on the image itself because that way it, Photoshop will thought you're duplicating the layer. And don't drag it on the gray area part. That's the same thing Photoshop thought you, you were just going to duplicate the layer. So make sure you hold Option and drag on the um, thumbnail of the mask to tell Photoshop clearly uh, is the mask I want to duplicate. And make sure you're holding Option when you're dragging the layer. Okay, so yeah, that's it. Looks really cool. And uh, I have like two background. You can pick either one that you like better. 
Uh, I think I'll just use this uh, bluish color uh, kind of texture, you know, just hide the ivory paper texture. Okay, and I can also add blending mode too on my watercolor theme. Okay, let's see. Uh, actually, I think I'll leave it normal. I like the color, it's a little bit more vivid. And I will try the paper texture and let me make it a little bit bigger. Again, make sure you hold sh uh, the shortcut for resizing your layer is Command T. Okay, I like the white, uh, white paper texture better. Okay, so cool. Uh, okay, so that's pretty easy. And same thing if you want to add some uh, like the landscape uh, as additional kind of texture uh, on top of this, pretty much the same thing. I'll just move this and so it already kind of look cool. And I'll move this down and same thing. We want the same mask. Uh, of course, you can copy uh, and drag that layer to make it fit. Uh, just like this and on um, a little issue here is because I have that line of that picture how can we remove it okay so some little tips I, uh, I also I don't like kind of the, the mountain showing here on her face so how can we remove that okay so first let's fix this line so one way to do is, uh, is let's adjust uh, the mask a little bit the other they're fine but in this case I want this mask to hide this line down here so how I do it is I can simply I'll use the gradient tool and then uh, I'll choose the gradient let's see okay find basic open the basic panel instead of going from black to white I usually like to use the one black to transparent okay so I think in this case it doesn't really matter but I'll tell you why I why I want to do that okay so uh, what I do here is I simply kind of create a gradient so make this mask um, blend from black to white and the transition will have a little bit like a grayish fading uh, so what it do is it will fa uh, feather uh, feather that line and remove that line that we don't want and same if we don't like this part of the image we can also very easily to fix it by uh, black out right uh, so we paint it black uh, I choose some like fancy br uh, brushes earlier so let me change it to back to just regular brushes okay, let's change it to regular brushes uh, remove all those stuff okay just a regular brush and we'll just uh, paint black okay we want to paint black yeah I mess mess with the setting earlier for a different different test so yeah you can see um, by painting black on my mask here I successfully removed that additional kind of parts that I don't want it to show in the layer okay yeah don't like the hardness so let me soften my brush a little bit so it can make that transition even smoother Okay, so yeah, it's pretty easy just like that. And if you want to move uh, the image in the back, but you say, oh no, it's like moving with my mask. Just a little tip, just simply uncheck the link between the mask and the image. You can see uh, you can move the image beneath it very easily. Okay, so yeah, I think this, this kind of look cool, almost look like a color. Okay, so yeah, that's it. That's pretty much uh, what I did for the image. And I'll show you guys something really quickly with the um, brushes. So it's kind of like what I, uh, not this one, what I did over here with like the more watercolor texture. Probably have like different blending mode for this image. Which one did I use? Oh, I used Vivid Light. Okay, and this one I use Overlay. Yeah, Vivid Light is a little brighter. Yeah, okay, I think I'll change it to Vivid Light. Okay, so uh, brushes is also something really cool that you can um, invest some time to play around. So I uh, upload some resources also on Blackboard. So under Demo, under Project 2 Demo, uh, 
I will put this tutorial I'm doing it right now under mask and blending mode. And here are some extra resources under brushes. Uh, so if you click on this, um, there's this one is a pretty good uh, tutorial. And uh, here there's uh, lots of like brushes uh, that is provided by Adobe for free that you can download. Okay. So yeah, of course there's more resources uh, that for brushes that you can download in addition to the site I provided, but I think they have some really cool selection over here. So you can uh, create brushes to look like uh, watercolor or even look like uh, oil pastel or comic um, brush. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So feel free to like download those and see um, if you want to add some more texture and unique brushes in your um, in your picture. Okay. In this tutorial, I shared uh, show you how you can uh, start it with a sketch and then using watercolor brushes uh, to create a, almost like a watercolor uh, painting just simply using Photoshop uh, instead of actually painting on paper. But the texture looks really realistic. Okay, so that's all using brushes. Okay, so feel free to watch this tutorial. I think it has a lot of uh, very simple, uh, but has a lot of like useful information. Okay, so I already download a brushes from this website. I think I download watercolor and simply just download. And what it will download is this. It will be a .abr file. So this is like a brush. I think it's Adobe brush file. So how to use it? It's very simple. All you need to do is in Photoshop, open the brush setting. Okay. If you don't see the brush setting, you can find it under window and check here, brush setting or brushes. Oops, my channel. Okay, brushes, uh, brush setting or brushes. Okay, so I have them in this little icon here. Okay, so how does brushes work? Okay, so when you first um, get started, um, you probably, those are the uh, kind of the brush set, set I added uh, in the template I install. Okay, so yeah, there's a lot of brushes. You, uh, if you open your file, there's nothing uh, nothing dramatic it probably only have those like very similar uh, like soft or hard i think um what you can tweak is very simple it's just the size and hardness here on the top but there's more thing you can do uh, in the brush setting okay so you can change like the uh, shape dynamic uh, scatter texture uh lots of like cool things you can do uh, with brushes you can even create like a like a symbol or shape for example, if you put a star or like a leaf on, um, and then you can actually save um, the image you created as a brush, so you can paint those uh, texture you created uh, as a brushes. Okay, well, we'll talk about that uh, later where I'll show you guys some example. But now we'll do the easy thing is uh, instead of messing with changing our own uh, setups, let's just uh, import the brush on the ABR file that we uh, download earlier and then put it in uh, Photoshop. So how to uh, open the file? Very simple. I'll go to the, I think it's the brushes panel. Yeah, I think if it's the brushes setting, you'll have that panel. So go to the brushes, brushes, okay. And then open this little list and find import brushes. Okay. And then uh, select the ABR file that you install download from the internet. I already downloaded it, so I'm not going to install it again. So after you uh, double click, you should see you got more uh, brushes uh, in your library. Yeah, so I think Kyle's, all those watercolor brushes are from the ABI, uh, ABR file I downloaded. Yeah, you can I think I accidentally installed it twice. Okay, so this is the same thing. Okay, so uh, yeah, and how to use this? Um, I think this is fun because uh, what you need to do is just have fun. Just select uh, any of the brushes. Okay, I'll just choose on um, this one. And then I can go to the brush setting so you can see how this brush look like. And you can see these are the setting for those brushes. So it's already have some like cool things going on like the shape dynamic will change. Uh, like texture will also change. There's some like texture here. And also it has like some uh, dual brushes built up, smoothing, all those stuff are um, kind of presets so you don't have to worry about that all you need to do is just uh, apply on your canvas and have fun okay so uh, here's my layer okay so let's uh, you can see yeah 
why I cannot paint on it? Because it's a smart object, we learned that earlier. So my suggestion is instead of painting on the actual picture and you might uh, do things that you don't want, the e better way is create a new layer and paint on the new layer. So if you change your mind, you can always go back and fix it. So yeah, I think this uh, brushes look kind pretty cool. Uh, you can either paint just by clicking it, and you can see the brush is rotating because it has dynamic to it. Uh, so it will, uh, even though it's the same brush, every time you draw, it will look different. Okay, it's a little too much. Okay, I'll, I'll do it. So uh, brushes can work as brushes. You can just draw because it really look like a watercolor. Or you can use it as stamp. You can click uh, and then it will kind of like stamp those texture on the canvas. So either way, it works pretty well. And I will use the uh, eyedropper tool to pick some different color when I apply my brushes so the uh, color will look more interesting. Okay, uh, a shortcut to switch to the eyedropper is holding option. So you don't have to like go there and select the, uh, the eyedropper every time. Okay, I'll do some like darker brown down here. Okay. I don't know if I, I like that. Okay, I'll undo that. Okay. Okay, something like that. I think, okay. Doesn't, don't want to go too crazy. Uh, maybe some brighter color. Like some, some white even. Okay, yeah. So, pretty cool. And same thing, I can also add some like blending mode so it blends uh, with the texture beneath it in a more interesting way or leave that as normal if you like that effect okay but yeah, I'll just choose whatever uh, and then tone down the opacity a little bit <coughs> excuse me okay so I think it's good now in Photoshop um, show you a little bit how you use blending mode mask and um, the brushes and now we can save our file so saving our file um, for this project uh, and then place it in, in design, just save it as a PSD. I'll tell you why in a little bit. Okay, so let's go to save as and just leave it as Photoshop file as a PSD. Make sure you save your file as, always save your file as a PSD before you save it as a JPEG or a PDF because only uh, uh, P, uh, P, because only Photoshop PSD will preserve all the layers and mask you have. Okay, uh, for I'll call it like I'll call it poster. Okay, and put it in my folder. Okay, it's on desktop. Okay. Okay, so I will pause this tutorial and I will start part one talking about InDesign uh, after that after this.